All right, let's talk audio. More importantly, what type of microphone you should be using in different type of situations. Let's get into the video. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I would appreciate it right off the bat if you guys would subscribe to the channel. We're really trying to grow this thing to get to a thousand subscribers so I can get this thing monetized and I can bring you guys more and more content and just try to help you guys level up your production game and you can start making more money with your camera. Now let's get into today's topic. All right guys, we're gonna be going over five different type of microphones and what situations that you should be using them in. The first microphone that we're gonna talk about today is the microphone that's built into your camera body. And obviously this is gonna be the least recommended microphone on this list. I put it on here just to kind of show you guys why it's not okay to use this type of microphone. So we're gonna, so what we're gonna do is wanna switch over to the onboard microphone right now. All right, so now what you are listening to is the microphone that is built into your camera. And for obvious reasons, you don't wanna use this type of microphone just because it's not that great. The microphone on your camera body is just a little tiny hole and it's basically just there to get you some scratch audio so you can sync up the audio that you use from other different type of microphones. In post. All right, so moving on to microphone number two, and that's gonna be your Rode shotgun microphone. The Rode is just the example that I have today because I have it in-house, but you can use any type of shotgun microphone for this example. This is more still gonna be geared towards your vloggers, people that hold out the camera in front of them just to kind of capture what they're saying as they're vlogging throughout the day or whatever the case may be. You can also use it as to capture cleaner ambient audio from your camera body. Let's say you're shooting a wedding or something like that and you're in the bridal suite and you're getting video of the brides getting ready with the bridesmaids and you wanna capture some of that and laughing, giggling, joking around and kind of use that to overlay some of your B-roll footage in your clips. But other than that, I wouldn't necessarily use this microphone for any other type of use situations. And we're gonna switch over to this microphone just so you guys can kind of get a sense of what it sounds like. But again, the camera's gonna be about five feet away from me and having a directional shotgun microphone is gonna still gonna pick up a lot of the ambient noise and it's not gonna sound as clean as if you were to use a different type of microphone and we're gonna switch to this microphone right now. All right, so we're on a different day. Um, I, was made, I made a mistake originally when I was recording this video and I didn't have the Rode Pro Plus plugged into the right camera slot. Make sure you guys have that plugged into the right camera spot. Don't make the mistake like I did. But, so I'm on a different day. This is what it sounds like. Um, again, the camera is about 10 feet away from me, five to 10 feet away from me or so. And it doesn't sound terrible. I, I would say if you're gonna record with this type of microphone on like a client shoot, talking head shoots like this, I would say go with a wider focal length so you can get the camera a little closer to you. And that in 10 will get the microphone closer to you. So we'll pick up your voice a little bit clearer, or if you can find a way to boom it like this mic, and you can find a way to you know hook that up and boom it over your head and get that thing as close to your face and your mouth as you possibly can, you might be able to get some really decent audio sounding quality out of that microphone. Um, but if you're gonna have it up rigged up like this and you're gonna have the camera five to 10 feet away from you, it's not gonna be the best option. Look to go for something else. But yeah, this is what it sounds like. What do you guys think? Is it usable? All right, so the next microphone that we're gonna talk about today is gonna to be the lav system. Now there's two different type of lav system that you can go with, one being a wireless recording system or being a standalone audio recorder in and of itself. Now these are gonna be your more popular microphones that could be used in a wide variety of situations, whether it be talking head interviews, uh, weddings, uh, short films, just about any type of situation that you would need a microphone, you can use the lav system. The lav system is gonna be one of the easiest and most affordable systems that you can go with that's gonna give you the cleanest audio possible when you're shooting any type of video. That's mainly because you're allowed to clip the microphone onto your subject where it's super close to their mouth so you're not picking up a ton of reverb or a ton of surrounding noises. A lav system is gonna be great and it's gonna work, like I said, in almost any type of situation in any case. So this is gonna be your more go-to in terms of new filmmakers and things like that. 
to go ahead and pick up a system like this because you can, like I said, you can use it for any type of situation. Now for me today, I have the Tascam DR10L and that's the one that we're gonna sample right now. So we're gonna switch over to this audio sample right now. Okay, so now you're listening to the Tascam DR10L which is clipped to my collar. Again, really, really close to my mouth and so it can pick up my voice really, really clearly. The downside to using a lob system though is especially if you have a scene where you have to lob out multiple people and you only have one microphone or maybe even two, you're gonna have to keep taking microphones off of subjects to put them on new subjects. And that can just take a lot of time and it can be a hassle, especially if you're trying to lob this stuff on females. It's not as easy when you just throw it on a dude's shirt or things like that, because a lot of females, they wear blouses, they wear spaghetti strap t-shirts. You can't necessarily hide it in plain sight. Now the two different lob systems that we were talking about at the beginning, the wireless system and the standalone recorder. The Tascam DR10L is gonna be a standalone recorder, basically meaning that this little device is its own recorder. It doesn't necessarily hook up to your camera. So you're gonna have to sync up that audio in post using the scratch audio that you get from your camera. Now that's important to note because if you're not necessarily adept to syncing up audio or you don't wanna go through that extra step in post, you can go with the wireless system, which would be something equivalent to like a wireless go or wireless go Two or the DJI mic system. There's tons of other ones out there on the market. But the only thing that you have to be aware of when you're going with a wireless loft system is that sometimes it can have some frequency disturbance, meaning that if you're using a loft system, the wireless system on a subject and they have another microphone that they're holding or something like that, maybe they're doing a speaking event or a wedding or any other thing like that, you can sometimes get some interference between the two microphones, which causing one microphone to kind of cut out a little bit. Another downside to having a wireless system as opposed to a standalone recorder is that the wireless system, you have to have the receiver connected to your camera. So every time you hit record, then the lob system is recording. If you stop recording, the microphone also stops. So you're not necessarily getting some of that lost audio in between recording your takes. Now, why this is important is because let's say you're shooting a wedding and you mic up your bride and groom and for whatever reason, your batteries die, the memory card runs out of space or your camera overheats, whatever the case may be, and your camera shuts off for whatever reason. The audio will also shut off with your camera and whatever the bride or groom are saying at the altar, you're not gonna be able to get that recorded be until you get your camera back operating. So that's one thing to note because one of the, and that's one of the reasons why I like going with a standalone recorder such as the Tascam DR10L is because when you're recording your ceremony or whatever and for whatever reason like we said your camera dysfunctions and you have to turn it off for whatever reason when you turn off your camera the Tascam DR10L is still going to be recording because like I said at the beginning it's its own recorder so it takes its own memory card so all your audio files is going to be baited into this little device, not necessarily gonna be linked up with your camera audio. Because in the event that your camera does shut off, you're still able to get that audio and just slap it on your video, overlay some B-roll over it, and it will be as if nothing ever happened. And another thing that I really, really like about the Tascam DR10L is once you hit record, all the buttons on the device is locked automatically. So there's no accidentally hitting a button and it just stops recording. You can't unlock it until you stop the recording. And stopping the recording is very difficult because you have to legit hold your hand, hold your finger here, hold up on the switch and hold it for a good second for it to even register to stop recording. So it gives you, it gives you a little bit of that peace of mind. And that has saved me a time or two because like I said, it's, something that you can just set, forget. So really, really cool system. Uh, I went a little longer on the task can be our 10 than I would like to, but really, really cool. I would highly recommend this over a DJI system or a uh, Rode Go system or anything like that. But not to say that the Rode Go or the DJI microphone system is bad. It's just for me as a filmmaker, it just, just gives me more peace of mind that this is gonna record no matter what and I don't necessarily have to worry about it because like all I had to do was just sync it up in post 
and I'll be good to go. The next microphone system on the list is gonna be a boom system. Now I have here the Rode NTG5. Again, there's a ton of options out there on the market, but what typical situations are you gonna to want to use a boom system over these other microphones? And that's basically gonna be like sit down interviews, more corporate style interviews, or if you're doing like short films or movies and things like that, and you have and you can afford to get an audio guy that's gonna follow you around and boom the mic overhead so you can capture clean audio so you don't necessarily have to lob people up and or use shotgun microphones and things like that. The boom system is probably one of the more popular systems that most people use in today's world, especially on professional interview settings and movies and things like that, like I was saying. Now, what are the benefits of using the boom system? Again, if you don't want to show any microphones in the shot, whether that be a lav, a studio microphone, or any other type of microphone like that, the boom system is gonna be the go-to system in which you would want to go with. Now, in terms of the overall sound quality, this one is gonna be amongst the top, depending on which type of microphone you get. Again, there's more expensive options that's gonna sound really, really good. And there's really cheap options that's gonna sound good, but just not as good as your more professional options that are out there on the market. Let's go ahead and boom this up and switch over to this audio sample so you guys can get a sense of how this one sounds. Let's switch over now. All right, so now we are on the boom microphone system. Again, I'm using the Rode NTG5. It's boomed up over my head. It's just out of frame. I'm touching the tip of the microphone right now so you can see that it's just outside of frame. You want this thing to be as close to your subject as physically possible, again, without being in the frame. Some of the benefits of having a boom microphone when you're doing like sit down interviews and things like that is Let's say you're interviewing multiple people at a, in a given space. You don't necessarily have to keep taking lav mics off of one subject, putting them on another subject, and keep switching microphones back and forth. You can just boom this up in a certain spot, have the chair, and multiple people can come in and out, sit there, and still get the same exact audio quality, and you not have to move out anything. So it makes it a little easier on you as a filmmaker and not necessarily having to have a lot of moving parts and clipping lav mics and things like that. Like we said with the task cams or the lav systems in general. This system is gonna be a little bit more expensive to run. Again, I bought the Rode NTG5. It's about a $600 microphone, but it, on it only comes with the microphone. You're gonna have to buy a boom pole, then you're gonna have to buy a C-stand, and you're gonna have to get a boom pole holder to kind of make all that work. Also, you're gonna need an XLR cable and an audio recorder to make all of that function. So you're probably looking at anywhere around a thousand to fifteen hundred, sometimes even two thousand dollars in order to run this type of system. You can go with cheaper options that can bring that cost down significantly. But if you really want really, really good sound quality and you want the best of the best, or not even the best of the best, if you just want really, really good sound quality, you're gonna have to fork out a little bit of extra cash than the other microphones that we talked about prior to this one. But yeah, to wrap this up, going with the boom system, like I said, is just gonna give you a little bit more of a professional feel when you're on set. Booming this thing up over your subjects, they're gonna feel a little bit more important as if they were in some type of like an official shoot and things like that. Because like I said, when you sit down and you're having these lights and everything like that, and you have this microphone boom over your head, it just makes it feel that much more official. So you're giving your clients a little bit more of an experience when you're going with a system like this. All right, and last but not least, the very last microphone on the list is gonna be the studio microphone. And this is the microphone I've been using in and out of this video. It's probably my favorite type of microphone to use because it's gonna have the best sound quality, in my opinion, of all the other microphones that I reviewed or talked about in this video. It's also probably gonna be the one of the more expensive options to kind of operate because not only do you have to buy the microphone, which is about $400, sure, with the Shure SM7B, you also have to get a desk stand and or a boom pole or a gator arm or whatever. And you're gonna need a couple XLR cables because this is a dynamic microphone, which means that it's very low in frequency. So you're gonna to need to boost the gain. In order, in order to boost the gain, you're gonna need a cloud lifter. And that cloud lifter is gonna to need to run into a audio recorder. So depending on how much you wanna spend or depending on how cheap you wanna go with it, you can get away with probably spending around eight, nine to a thousand dollars on this type of system. 
and it can go up in terms of you know just the kind of audio equipment that you want to buy the xlr cables that you want to get and so on and so forth probably not as expensive as a boom pole system it, again depending on which type of microphone you go with but it it probably ranges around the same even the studio microphones might even come in at a bit cheaper if you wanted to go a cheaper route because you can use some really affordable microphones in terms of a studio system just because you're able to get that microphone really really close to your face and being able to talk into the microphone directly limiting all the reverb and the noise and giving you the absolute best sound quality that that microphone can give you and obviously there are other microphones such as this one out there on the market that are a lot cheaper for example sure also makes a m7 microphone which is a usb microphone that plugs directly into your computer that can feed your audio source directly into your computer system and that way you can cut out the middleman so it's already baked into your computer you don't have to really need a cloud lifter and or an audio recorder with that type of microphone system and it's going to be a lot cheaper looks just as good on camera sounds just as good in my opinion especially if you're not an audio engineer you know you're doing all these crazy things with audio it's going to sound pretty good there's also ones from rode and a bunch of other ones out there i'm not going to go down the list but go ahead do your research figure out which type of studio system that would be right for you and go that route and the type of situations that you would want to use a studio microphone is going to be obviously for videos like this where you're sitting in front of a camera maybe you have a desk and you're talking directly into the mic and you don't mind the microphone being in the shot also for podcasts um, if you're a vocal recorder doing voiceover work or if you're a rapper singer things like that using this type of microphone is going to be more beneficial and it's going to sound the best in my opinion for that for those type of situations again talking about the sure sm7b it's probably one of the more popular podcast microphones and vocal microphones on the market right now if you're into watching podcasts you probably see this microphone more frequently than any other microphone on the market and also Weirdly enough, this is the microphone that Michael Jackson recorded his Thriller song, or I think his entire Thriller album, using this microphone. So it goes to show you how old this thing is, and it's still one of the more popular microphones on the market. Take that with a grain of salt. It's been a great microphone for me. Like I said, I personally love it, and it's usually the microphone that I'm always using when I'm shooting my YouTube videos and things like that. So guys, there you have it. Those were the five different type of microphone systems to use in certain situations. But I do want to mention one last honorable mention, and that's your cell phone. This is gonna sound weird, but yes, you can use your cell phone as a microphone only if you're like in a dire situation. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using your iPhone or your phone in general as a first option because I was one time I showed up on a shoot, I brought my Tascam dr 10 ls I didn't have a battery and I didn't have an SD card to go with it. So I was panicking, I didn't know what to do. It was a speaking event, the camera was set way in the back of the room on a 70 to 200 zoomed in on the speaker. And obviously if I'm using the onboard microphone, it's just gonna sound really, really terrible. So the next best thing that I could think of on the spot was to pull out my phone, open the voice recorder app, and have the speaker get the audio that way. It wasn't the cleanest, it wasn't the best, but it kinda got the job done, saved my ass a little bit. It did take a lot of audio editing to get that thing to sound somewhat decent. But like I said, it's just something that to use in a pinch just to get the job done, to save yourself from not, had, not recording any audio at all, and you know, and being that it's a cell phone, we are used to listening to audio through these cell phones anyways. A lot of the content that we're consuming online is shot with iPhones or phones in general. So a lot of that audio is coming through the microphone on your camera anyway. So we're kind of used to listening to that. But obviously if you're comparing that to the, some of the microphones that we talked about in this video, it's just not gonna sound nearly as good, but if this is the only thing people were hearing, I don't think they would think too much of it. And just to give you guys an example, we're gonna switch over to the iPhone microphones. We're gonna open up the voice memo app, we're gonna hit record, and we're gonna be listening to the audio coming out of the microphone right now. So this is what it would sound like if we were to use the phone as a microphone system. Again, I'm just holding it right here. 
I got the microphone pointing directly to my face and trying to pick up as clean as audio as possible. Another way you can set this, you can just put it in somebody's coat pocket that can run audio that way or set it next to a table where they can just set it down and talk normally and then pick up some type of audio. So this is what that would sound like, again, when you're comparing it to the other forms of audio, especially like the Shure 7B or your boom mic or whatever. It's not gonna sound nearly as good, but like I said, in a pinch, you can kind of get away with it, but I wouldn't necessarily go with this as like a first option. This is like a last resort type of thing. Don't beat me up in the comments, but yeah, you can go that route and save yourself from being a complete failure and getting something done, rather just not having audio at all. So guys, that was the video. Make sure you hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. I know it was a little long, but it took a little while to go over all the different type of audio sources. If you guys like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing to the channel. Again, we're trying to build this thing up so we can bring you guys more and more value, more and more reviews like this to help you guys scale up your production business and or just helping you guys make better videos for yourselves and your social media accounts. But yeah, man, continue to rock with your boy. Like I said, please, please, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, hit me up in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.